doctors and private practice, board certified in psychiatry and neurology, and also was trained extensively in internal medicine for two years uh, before I went, went into my psych training. I was uh, chief resident in internal medicine. I was also chief resident in psychiatry. So I've always had a strong medical background to my approach to uh, psychiatric issues. Tonight, or today, we're going to talk about sleep disorders. Sleep disorders are profoundly important because if you can't sleep, it's hard to function. I've always joked around by saying if you want to take over a country, just keep the army awake for about three weeks. They'll beg you to let them sleep first and you can take it over. Sleep disorders are amazingly, amazingly common. Uh, the two most common ones are restless leg syndrome and periodic limb movement disorder. Restless leg syndrome, these are both highly inherited from your ancestors, your parents or grandparents. So your mom or dad had them, had one of these or they had, or both of them had this, they're very common. Mm -hmm. The accepted, uh, at least official rate of uh, incidence of these disorders for restless leg syndrome is 10%. In other words, 10% of the adult population has uh, restless leg syndrome. Now, in my practice, I see a, a much higher percentage than that because I see a lot of people that can't sleep. I'm not seeing 100 people out of the general population picked randomly. I'm seeing people that are coming to me because they're tired, they can't sleep, or, or have some other issue. They don't often, they really rarely come in and complain about insomnia. Uh, they may have substance abuse issues, they may have mood, mood disorder issues, anxiety disorders. It's usually, I find out about their sleeping problems because I question them if they have trouble sleeping. So every person that's seen by a psychiatrist at some point should be asked, how long does it take you to fall asleep at night? And if it takes longer than 30 minutes, especially if it takes up to an hour after you lay down, that's a problem. You should be able to go to sleep in less than 30 minutes. Uh, so what are the two sleep disorders that I've mentioned? Restless leg syndrome involves uh, people who move their feet, legs, or toes, and also arms, hands, fingers, in bed trying to go to sleep. Uh, generally, it's more commonly, much more common in the lower extremities, but it can also involve the upper extremities. I've had patients that can't quit moving their hands, their arms, and they don't know why they do that. And also, but most people rub their feet together, they cross in and cross their legs, their legs may twitch in an upward kind of fashion, not that they'll twitch three feet in the air, but they may just be twitch, twitchy, or they may have strange uh, feelings in their skin or they tingle or burn, and those are called uh, paresthesias. In other words, a person has a restlessness in their extremities, and they feel a need to move them. And uh, if they do move them, it does relieve some of the tension that they feel in their legs. Sometimes they get so restless, people have to get up and walk around because it's just very, very t uh, restless and the urge to, to move is so overwhelming you have to get up and walk for two or three minutes and that relieves the, the feeling temporarily to get back in bed, but it may repeat itself. So people that have RLS can spend one, two, three, four, five hours trying to get asleep. If they get to sleep, they may wake up multiple times during the night. But restless leg syndrome is also associated with this sensation that they can't stop their mind from racing. 
and they find themselves thinking about every other thing under the sun that may have happened that day or the day before, and they they usually pinpoint their mental activity as being the cause of their insomnia. But in fact, it's not. It's part of the syndrome. So if you diagnose the syndrome correctly and treat it correctly, most people respond for restless leg syndrome. There's also a second syndrome that is seen about 80 or 90 percent of the time with restless legs called periodic limb movement disorder. What that means is that periodically throughout the night when you're asleep, your limbs move at the same interval. And when your limbs move, what happens is if you're in deep sleep, you'll be yanked out of deep sleep and you'll go up to stage two sleep, which is not restful, or you will wake up multiple times. So essentially you don't get any rest. You can't go to sleep, you can't stay asleep. So, uh, so what do you do about these two syndromes? Uh, RLS occurs in conjunction with PLMD about 90% of the time. Sometimes it's separate. I Myself, I have periodic limb movement disorder by itself. I don't have restless leg syndrome. And I'll wake up, I used to wake up multiple times at night and just be utterly exhausted in the morning. Couldn't get out of bed. Take me an hour just to get up. And I was always late uh, getting places if if I had an appointment in the morning. So I tried getting treatment and everything we tried medically, medications didn't either didn't work or they caused intolerable side effects. So I just had to live with it, which wasn't a good solution. I finally, uh, started using hydroxychloroquine, which is a medicine for uh, COVID, and it's also been used for different types of arthritis. It's been used by billions of people throughout the world. So I have a type of arthritis which calls for that medicine, so I start, started on it from my doctor, and lo and behold, about three weeks later, my sleep disorder was gone. Not cured, but gone. And um, it's been pretty much gone ever since. And um, hydroxychloroquine is a drug that affects the immune system, and many of these psychiatric issues come from the immune system. So it, it and it's fixed this syndrome in me. It's it's really important to get these syndromes uh, treated or diagnosed first, and then treated because if you don't you can die years early because you don't get any you don't get much restorative sleep you lose sleep on the front end of trying to go to sleep and you lose sleep during the night if you have periodic limb movements and, and you wake up too much so you, you don't get any rest and that's when you get restorative sleep i knew a patient a couple of years ago and she said her dad died at age 69 as far as anybody who knew, including his doctors, said there was nothing wrong with this man. He was uh, in very good health. He had no, no depression. He had no um, ulcers, diabetes, nothing. He was in perfect health and was on no medication of any kind. But he still died at age 69 in his sleep. And what it appears except he did have two disorders which were known to the family but he never got them diagnosed or treated. He had restless leg syndrome and what I call a PLMD since about age two all his entire life and I think his whole body just wore out because it never got any restorative sleep so he died unnecessarily. So anyway uh, take a look at these syndromes and they're easy to diagnose if you go to the right person. Most doctors don't ask you these questions about going to sleep or staying asleep, so they often go undiagnosed. 
But again, if you go into a primary care doctor or somebody like that, they will be, if you push them in the right direction, guide them, they may figure it out. I have a relative that called me one day and said that he couldn't sleep, couldn't go to sleep or stay asleep. And I took a little history and I said, well, I think you've got restless leg syndrome and maybe PLMD. And this person had already been seeing a psychiatrist and I said, well, uh, when you go in to see him next time, tell him you think you've got restless leg syndrome and I'm sure he'll be able to treat it. So he went in there and tried to tell the doctor. The doctor got kind of anxious. Oh, I, I don't treat that. I don't treat it. You have to go see somebody else. That's the part where I'm talking about where I don't think doctors, psychiatrists, have as much competence as they should have. It's a very easy thing to diagnose, and very easy to treat. And it is a probably a neurological cause of insomnia. Why wouldn't you know how to treat that? Why wouldn't you want to treat it? So that's one of my pet peeves. But So I hope that you've enjoyed this brief talk about the two most common sleep disorders. There are others, uh, but I won't go into those right now. These make up by far the most common. And uh, I hope that you, if you liked what you heard, subscribe to my channel, uh, hit the like button and the notification bell. And if you have any comments about anything or about uh, uh, any future videos you might like to see in this area, please do so. Thank you very much.